please for the love of Michael Burry, can someone explain to me why there are so many retail traders getting RKO'd into the ground? I know we're all risk takers at Wall Street Bets, but I mean, come on, man. You gotta know when you get into this dangerous game of short-term options trading that one of the occupational hazards includes your money getting scorched with the heat of a thousand suns. Almost every day, the sub is littered with a new flock of degenerates, losing more money than they have any business shuffling into their debased style of trading. I'm talking about user Remote Awareness, who gambled his entire college fund and lost and Snoocakes, who lost more than his life savings in a week on leveraged options and can no longer afford food and so must drink cheap alcohol to meet his caloric needs. And my favorite, a guy who prefers to stay anonymous despite having already posted his play on Wall Street Bets. He got $100,000 from his dad's life insurance, peace be upon him, and lost 80 grand of it between Monday and Wednesday. Right now, the whole sub of Wall Street Bets is a parade of tainted DD and mental health crises. We're no strangers to loss porn on Wall Street Bets, but something new is happening here. This bear market is like gasoline to our regarded dumpster fire, and j just keeps adding more juice. This is, without question, the highest body count I've ever witnessed on this sub. But what explains this phenomenon? Why is half of our beloved subreddit losing 75% of their life savings in a week, when it took the market 10 months to lose 25%? Many of us already know the answer, but if you want to dive into this can of worms, be prepared for a bumpy ride. The problem we all have with traditional financial advice is that it's designed to help you die rich. Put in 60 hours a week at your job, at age 21 start saving for retirement at 70, live below your means, and then wait it out at a nursing home. It sucks. If you want to enjoy the finer things in life before you're old enough for Medicare, we all know you're gonna have to take a chance somewhere. And for most people, that place is Wall Street. That once distant bastion of wealth is now available on your phone 24 hours a day, and with a few sloppy taps of your fingers across the glass, you can throw as much money as you want at a stock you heard about 10 minutes ago. So which one do you want? Do you want to work as a shift manager at Home Depot to make your bosses rich until you're in your late 60s? Or do you want to take a pass at that TikTok travel influencer and stock market guru lifestyle? Even if you trade stocks and lose nine times in a row, your whole life can change with just one good trade. The rise of Wall Street bets already shows us what people prefer. That five times increase in degeneracy during the GameStop squeeze shows us we all secretly want that gain. There's only one problem here. Making money in the market is easier said than done. It's often said that 90% of retail traders lose money, and out of that 10% that do make money, 9 out of 10 still underperform the market. This statistic makes you picture images like this. We've got the market, we're usually talking about the S&P 500, it's got this nice upward trajectory with some bumps in the road. When you hear that 90% of retail traders lose money, it makes you think of a portfolio that looks like this. Constantly on the decline, always in the red. Even that 10% who do make money tend to hover between breakeven and the S&P. They would have been better off buying SPY, especially after you consider taxes. We do have some traders on Wall Street bets whose portfolios look like this red line. They've never seen a green day in their lives. But this image is not really what happens to the average retail trader. The average schmuck off the street invests in momentum, in high-flying stocks that crush the S&P. Even Feisty Butthole, who started with almost 1.5 million and traded like absolute garbage to consistently lose money for almost two years during a bull market, even he was up almost 50% in the beginning. Most retail traders, at some point, do make money. You might think that's out of touch and that makes no sense, but I can prove it. I present Exhibit A. There's a lot going on here, but I want to look at the light blue line that's comparing the retail favorite index to the S&P 500. Whenever the light blue line is above 100, retail is beating the market. Since about March 2020, the average retail investor was absolutely dominating the S&P. Reddit users with names like PurpleKush69420 were beating the S&P by over 50%. Why? Because they were jumping into those high growth companies with negative earnings, like those traded under the ARK ETFs and a whole bunch of SPACs. As long as people kept buying, prices kept rising, and those who used calls for additional leverage were easily making 300% plus. But then look what happened. Look at the dark blue line, which is the amount of money in billions that retail traders dumped into stocks. By mid-2021, retail stopped adding money. By the time the bear market hit in January of 2022, retail was dumping their trash shares of Palantir, SoFi, and Rivian. After dominating the S&P for two years, 
retail traders are once again underperforming the S&P. Those years chasing returns on quote growth plays and picking up leaps on ARK ETFs amounted to nothing. Retail has shown the ability to beat the market on average, at least for a little while, but before long, you wind up like this guy on Dave Ramsey who lost $150,000 of his wife's money, or user Impossible Head who lost his life savings. This spectacle of making massive gains and then losing them is what I call the drug dealer's fallacy. There's probably some philosopher out there with a better name for it, but this is how it works. The drug dealer slings crystal like Jesse Pinkman and makes a thick wad of cash. Then he does it again and again until he's Scrooge McDucking his money. He could stop now and be rich, or he can do it again until he's so disgustingly rich that the Saudi princes come to him for financial advice. He's intoxicated with wealth, so he keeps going until he gets caught and put in jail, and now he's at a 100% loss. The drug dealer failed to take gains. He can't stop until he gets caught. He can't quit when he's ahead, and neither can the retail trader. The reason the average trader doesn't beat the S&P is because he never closes his positions until they go red, or his options expire worthless. Take user holicisms for example. He held the dank trades crown in mid-2021 after he made $7 million in AMC in the span of a week. He could have been done for the rest of his life, but he pushed his luck with calls on Tesla and lost over $6 million. And even if he did double again to $14 million, he would have gambled again until he gave all his gains back. He was our drug dealer. Another perfect example, user Hegye made $3 million between August 16th and 17th and then lost it all on August 18th. By August 19th, he was $1.1 million in the red. Despite making $3 million on Tuesday, he was underperforming the S&P by Thursday. Even those who are right now making money, especially with puts, they're going to do the same thing. If these six-figure gainers on short-term puts don't immediately put 50% of it into dividend ETFs, they're going to end up underperforming SPY too. The reason for so much carnage among retail traders, especially on Wall Street bets, is that most people investing now have never seen a bear market before. The last time we had a no-shit depressing bear market comparable to this one is 2007 to 2009. I was a high school student washing dishes for $8 an hour so I could buy $2 shares of Fannie Mae and 25 cent shares of Sponge Tech. Most of the people watching this video were probably too young to invest. For most of us, myself included, we've never traded a proper bear market before, and 2020 doesn't count. That was a month-long flash crash with a 33% decline that recovered in 5 months. That is a totally new animal and shouldn't even make this list. And if we add this year's bear market, it looks like this. 10 months, 26% decline. It is an average bear market, but by no means the worst, and we could easily decline all the way through the end of 2023 without entering uncharted territory. So what's my message here? Am I just here to dunk on user C2NY who lost all his money in a month? Or user 71CK5 who gained 150000 in a month and then lost 180000 in the next two weeks? If your portfolio chart looks like the castle from Frozen, then it is fun to watch, but that's not why I'm here. If you trade stocks like the average drug dealer trades drugs, then you should expect average retail trader results. You will lose money in the long run, and if you don't, you'll underperform the S&P. So don't trade like the average retail trader, instead do something smart. When you make those massive gains, take your cash and invest it in something useful. If you're Higye and made 7 million on some random Tuesday, close out and invest in basically anything worth holding. Buy 30-year treasuries yielding 3.5% and live off $105,000 a year. I think the YouTuber Benjamin, you guys apparently watch him too, I think he put it best. If making $4 million isn't within your plan, then what is your plan? He's absolutely right. Take your gains and build out your long-term buy and hold portfolio before you reinvest back into speculative stocks. Once you have a thick stream of dividends coming your way each month and you're jacked to the tits on indexed ETFs, then it's time to get more aggressive. By that point, even if you do underperform the S&P with your high risk trading, you're still making money with the rest of your portfolio. We don't want to boomer invest and just die rich, but that doesn't mean you must go all or nothing. We've seen Wall Street Bets traders go from 2,000 to half a million in three months, so there is no reason to go all in on zero day to expiration calls with 40 grand. Keep 38,000 in SCHD and turn the remaining 2K into half a mil. 
when you fail, your SCHD will still be there paying you dividend. If you really want to get after it, let's look at our bear markets. The worst bear market we've ever had since World War II was the 2007 to 2009 crisis. The market dropped 56% over 17 months. A 56% decline from the S&P's top in December would put us at about SPY 206. You can sell SPY $200 puts expiring in December 2023 for $430. That's not a lot of money for $20,000 of buying power, but you're free and clear unless the market goes into the worst decline since World War II. And if you do get assigned, then lucky you, you just bought SPY at $200. If you want to pick an absolute bottom, keep your portfolio invested in low beta stocks until then, and if you really want to hedge, buy some 3 month plus dated puts. If you insist on zero day to expiration puts, keep them small. That way when you underperform the S&P, at least it's not a total loss. It's time to get real about our portfolios. It's not 2020 anymore. Take gains, buy dividend ETFs, and then YOLO your dividend. If you do this right, then maybe you can avoid being one of those retail traders getting mauled by hungry bears. Good luck with trading everybody. Join our free discord. The link is in the description. Thanks all for watching.